Alrighty guys, uh, welcome back to New Record Day, Sound Clips with Commentary, XLS Encores on H-Frame Open Baffle Subs, because why not? <laughs> In all seriousness, uh, as good as the XLS Encore is, it drops off around 50 hertz, and I want you guys to hear some serious bass, and kind of hear the full potential of a rig like this, so... Let's jump in and have some fun. All right, treble impressions, here we go. I've already uh, taken some measurements from the microphone and I've adjusted the plate amps accordingly to get a very clean linear response all the way down to 20 hertz. You can see the measurement on the screen right now. So that kind of gives you an idea of what you're hearing from the point of the microphone. And uh, yeah, I like that tweeter. I can tell you that right off the bat. similar to how I feel with the spatial sapphires. I love it when I can hear resolution and I love it when that when that resolution is not exaggerated or tilted one way or the other and all of those little intricate details they just sound right they sound natural and I really appreciate that. Same thing. Um, <laughs> of course you're hearing some great bass. Obviously you're hearing some great bass on that track, but near the end, right in the middle, you have all of these percussive rhythmatic things going. Is rhythmatic a word? You guys help me out. Anyways, you're hearing a bunch of stuff that on some speakers it can sound congested or it can, or it can sound smeary. And with these, it's easy to hear all of the detail clearly. And I really like that about these. Showing off scale. And it's also showing off at the end, you have that abrupt stop and then you have that reverb trail and you get an idea of just how big that room actually sounds in the recording. And these do a great job with it. If you remember this track from the Spatial uh, Sapphire Sound Clips and Commentary, I feel like the top end of this mix is a little bit hot, and so when you have a speaker that is going to be telling you the truth, you're able to discern that, yeah, it's a little bit hot, but when you have a top end that is tilted or forward, then that track just doesn't work. It sounds bright, and it sounds like a mess and similar to what I experienced with the sapphires I'm experiencing again with these which is we have a natural presentation on top it's not tilted it's not forward it's not bright and it kind of exposes the truth in recordings which I really appreciate all right upper mid-range here we go
So as I mentioned in the review with these guys, upper mid-range has just enough forgiveness to where you can really rock out with these speakers and that particular recording is not really anything to get excited about. I mean that electric guitar sounds fine, but what I like so much about these and I've heard it time and time again through the review process, I can listen to anything classic rock related with the XLS Encores and I'm able to turn up the music and not once do I feel like I'm done here. I'm entering fatigue and I just can't do it. So these are a speaker that you can really rock out with and you can play a lot of electric guitars without any problem. And whether it's ACDC, Guns N' Roses, you name it, it works and it works really, really well. This was a standout track with the Spatials, and it was also a standout track when I've heard it played back on my Auticas. This is where Open Baffle can just do some amazing things that no box speaker can really do. Yes, you do have depth in this recording, and yes, those horns sound fantastic. There's nothing wrong with the tone, and there's also quite a bit of depth in terms of the soundstage, but what I'm not getting, and it's not the speaker's fault, it's just a limitation in their design is I don't quite have the same layering effect that I'm able to get out of Open Baffle. Nevertheless, if we're talking about tone, I'm fine with everything that I just heard. Natural is the key word here. It just sounds natural. So there's our guitarist friend that we chatted about with the uh, Sapphires, and once again, he's back by the lamp. So yeah, these know how to do depth, and there's no doubt about that. It's just not quite the same layering as that you can get with Open Baffle, but nevertheless, that presentation right there sounded fantastic. That's an interesting one because it sounds almost confused in the middle with a lot of speakers. There's so much happening with that. It's, I'm telling you that with a lot of the inexpensive bookies that we've been trekking through, that just, it's so hard to hear the individual instruments on that track. And with these, I'm able to do it. So I can appreciate that. Mid range, here we go. So I can clearly identify the bagpipe, if that's what that is, I think it's a bagpipe playing and it is separated from the mix enough to where I can just clearly hear it. And the rest of the mid-range sounds really fleshed out. It sounds like it has scale and size. So, yeah.
so many awesome details in that. I mean, that recording is deep. And I am getting a little bit more layering effect on that particular track, which is interesting. But nevertheless, it's still, it's still not going to compete with some of the open baffle stuff. Um, one thing that stands out is these little clacky instruments, if you guys know what that is. Um, <laughs> hand clacky instrument. I think that's the technical <laughs> name of it. Oh, man, I sound like an idiot. Anyways, it pops in these recordings. And what I like so much about these encores is it sounds holographic. I'm, I'm just like, you're right there. And it's just so precise and vivid and holographic that it's pretty darn convincing. No commentary needed, that sounded fantastic. One of the things that Danny would always talk about when he was doing the, you know, Tuesday Tech Talks is it's really important that a driver does not have stored energy. And it's also equally important that that driver has, when we take measurements, when we start looking at its spectral decay, that that spectral decay is clean. And when we can see that in a measurement, that is one thing that you are able to hear. And this last track that we just listened to illustrates some of the things that I've noticed with speakers that have a clean waterfall or spectral decay in that all of those congos, all those congas and bongos, all of those instruments that are being played, it is so quick and so precise that there is no smearing from those instruments that are playing with anything else that is happening within the mix. It's easy to hear everything all at once and all of these intricate little micro details, it's easy to pick it up. And I really do appreciate that with these particular speakers, which have a very, very clean spectral decay or waterfall. You know, I get a lot of questions about open baffle subs with home theater. Yeah, I could see it working, for sure. Uh, that was incredible. All right, mid-bass, here we go. It's important to understand this. Mid bass and bass, when we start talking about the XLS encores, it's gonna be a bit tricky because they do drop off at 50 hertz. So a lot of the impressions from here on out, it's gonna to pertain to, are you using them with a subwoofer and what does that integration look like? As I've already shown you with that frequency response, we're listening to very clean bass all the way down to 20 hertz. What is cool about these H-frame open baffle subs and those plate amps is you can make the bass whatever you want. You can make the mid bass whatever you want. So if you don't want linear, if you're saying, hey, Ron, that sounds a little bit weak in the bass. I actually want things to be a little bit elevated. Guess what? You can do that. And it's not difficult to do at all.
texture and tone, all paper cone drivers, all the way down into the subs. And you can hear all the resolution that there is to hear in mid bass and bass, and I love it. Doesn't matter the type of music that we're talking about, electronic music certainly works with open baffle subs and it certainly works with the encores. Um, you can, this is not, this is not an audiophile speaker that is only good at some type, some types of music and not others. It is, it's an all arounder. It can play anything and it can do it really well. The percussion in that is so, it just punches through the mix. And then we have our sitar playing friend, I want to go and shake his hand again because it's floating in space. And so, yeah, that track is awesome. I love the organ at the end. I love the congas and the bongos and the bass guitar. Nothing is competing with each other in the mix. You can hear everything isolated by itself when you want to. You just focus on that instrument and it's easy to hear every single note with precision every single time. Not once do I find myself saying, that conga and that bongo almost sounds like one instrument. Everything has its own unique voice and there is clarity and resolution in the mid bass. Alrighty, ladies and gentlemen, bass. Another great example of near the end of that when you hear those really, really low notes and I have no idea if it's going to translate in this recording, but you, when you hear texture and tone in really deep, really low bass, you can't go back. You just can't. certainly not my kind of music, but once again, it just shows that it really doesn't matter what it is that you're listening to. Open baffle servo subs are up to the task. And I would imagine that that track is going to sound pretty naked with just the XLS encores by themselves. You really do need subs to dig down that low and uh, make that work and to make it work well. But nevertheless, in a setup like this, it definitely works. Tons of intricate little details on top mixed with insane low bass that is easy to hear. So not only do we have a speaker that is 
quick and light on its feet up top. With the XLS Encore, we have insanely fast bass. And so with tracks like that, you are rewarded with incredible dynamics. The depth of that one is ridiculous. There, there's effects and obviously I think it's probably keys that's doing it, but there's some effects in that that is just, it's past my fireplace. It's out in the backyard. And again, deep bass that it doesn't sound like well farts. It sounds real and natural and lifelike. It's really something you guys got to hear. All right, female vocals, here we go. I don't wanna be loved by you, be loved by you. I don't need to be hurt or rescued, not by you. She has a really raspy voice, really unique voice. That's why I always pick that track and I like it quite a bit. Let's go ahead and check out this next one. love her voice. I mean, again, not really even my style of music, to be honest with you. It sounds like cheesy audiophile music to me, but she is right there. I mean, it's, and no, listen, no sound clip can do justice when it comes to staging, but I'm telling you, she is suspended in air and she has weight. She's holographic. And so, her voice is just, it, it's, guys, it's as good as it's going to get. I mean, past this, it's, you're really going to have to start peeling back layers of other things outside of just that vocal because that sounded incredible. All right, Mel Vocals, here we go. You tell me you're scared You tell me you're weak But I know you're stronger Than what you think All 
right, that sounded great. Let's go ahead and check out the next one. Life is a winding road No telling where it goes Driving through days and nights Won't stop for traffic lights I love the acoustics on that track, and the male vocals sound fantastic. It's got presence, it's got body, it's got just enough weight. I know he's not singing down the lowest, <laughs> that's for sure, but it is natural. And that is the key word to remember when you're thinking about the XLS Encore. They are a natural, beautiful sounding loudspeaker that they just don't disappoint. All right, that was fun. We'll see you guys in the next video.